Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fizel. This is Think Tech. More specifically, this is Talking Tax with Tom, Tom Yamachika, president of the Hawaii Tax Foundation. Today, we're going to talk about the state auditor that is Les Condo. And is he on the chopping block? It was an article a few days ago that suggests that there's there, people don't like him in the ledge. And uh, there was this long report written about him. And we're going to find out today from Tom. Uh, what's going on and how this affects our prospects at learning about government. Hi, Tom. Hi, Jay. Thank you for having me on the show. So what is the state auditor? And what is the state auditor supposed to do? The, the state auditor is uh, basically a uh, one arm of the legislature. Uh, his uh, job is to go into uh, state agencies, make sure they're running okay, uh, that they are, uh, you know, honest and, you know, stating things to the public correctly. I mean, that's what an audit audit is, uh, to make sure your financial statements are not materially misstated. Um, but they have been, uh, they, the legislators have been tasking uh, the state order with all kinds of interesting uh, assignments, like evaluating um, general excise tax and net income tax and other tax exemptions on a, you know on a rolling basis that's that kind of was um, uh, legislated into place during uh, the time that jill takuda i don't know if you remember her uh, but she was ways and means chair at the time that was uh, you know a few years ago uh, and uh, those reports have started you know coming uh, coming up the uh, auditor's office has reviewed like a bunch of general excise tax exemptions. Well, wait a um, minute. That's a an auditor usually audits the affairs of government to see whether right. there's any funny business going on, whether you know the, our tax money is being spent appropriately, uh, whether the people are mm, engaged in actions which are mm, uh, you know illegal or uh, improper. But uh, this is different. Um, the auditor was asked to make an evaluation of the of gross excise tax exemptions. That that's new, isn't it? That's a completely new task for the state auditor, isn't it? Oh yes, it is. Um, but the uh, the legislature has given uh, the state auditor plenty of new tasks. Uh, you know, along the lines of you know what an investigative reporter would do. So um, uh, it's kind of a, a brave new world to be a state auditor. Uh, and uh, not only do they have to kind of learn about gr uh, general excise tax, but also uh, net income, franchise tax, uh, you know, all kinds of other things that we have in our tax arsenal. Uh, to but make when sure the state that, auditor examines their state exemption under the general excise tax or income tax, whatever it may be, is right. the state auditor going out there for anecdotal evidence and picking up the phone or interviewing people and finding situations um, and cases which uh, which the public should know about, or or is the state auditor simply looking at the calculation and the revenue and the way the bill works or the prospective bill works? Um, you know, what exactly is is this a kind of you say investigative reporter that 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 leads to the possibility that the state auditor is out there in the landscape uh, finding abuses, for example. Is, is that what the state auditor has been doing on, on tax bills and um, exemptions? Yeah, well, yes. Um, mm -hmm. The state auditor has been tasked with you know, trying to figure out if the legislative intent has been met. And if it hasn't, uh, then maybe we ought to be recommending this exemption for repeal. Uh, the, the state auditor has also been looking at uh, you know, non-general funds that the agencies control. That's kind of been a staple of their existence for uh, you know, quite a few years now. Uh, and you know, they look at uh, special funds, revolving funds, and so forth. Are, the, are they appropriately classified? Uh, do they meet the criteria set in statute for a special fund or revolving fund or whatever the, whatever the heck the fund is classified as? Uh, and, and if not, uh, you know, is it, is it uh, better to uh, you know, reclassify or, or abolish the, uh, the fund entirely? So um, uh, the, uh, the auditor has been 
uh, test was doing that. And I mean, that's not a typical function of an auditor. The typical function of an auditor is to go and look at a an entity's financial statements and express an opinion on whether they have been materially misstated. It's just like an or accountant the, type of auditor. Well, it's yeah, that, auditor that's, that's what, yeah. yeah, that's exactly what the auditor is. Um, so, uh, but, but there are of course, uh, differences between auditing a public company and, and auditing the government. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so the auditor has been kind of tasked with going into different agencies and, and, and to do that, uh, they normally uh, hire a regular auditors. Like when I was at uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers and then Acuity, uh, we did a lot of uh, out of state, a lot of state auditing work, and, and Acuity still does that now. Um, well, and... let, me, let me ask. This is really an interesting discussion. Um, so back in the day, before this state auditor was tasked with these. Um, uh, examinations of whether a statute was working, whether a tax was working before that day. Who did that? Who went out into the governmental landscape? Who decided, you know, to go out into the governmental landscape and do that um, and did it? I mean, it sounds like if this is a new function, who was performing it before? Nobody? Uh, probably nobody, uh, because the state auditor was uh, created, I think, in the 78 CONCON um, Constitutional Convention. Mm -hmm. and, and so the office hasn't been around that long, although, uh, you know, it's been around a good, you know, a couple of decades or so. Um, probably let me, more. Let me do the math. That was 1978. Huh? It's for you and me and people like us, it only seems yesterday. But if you start, you start counting the, the decades, it's quite quite a piece of time. Right, it is. So, uh, so, so the idea, and you know, what brings us to this conversation today, uh, is that last week Thursday, uh, there was a report that was issued by a working group that was convened by the Speaker of the House, and uh, the, uh, you know, what the uh, work group was tasked with is to see whether. Uh, the auditor was complying with the constitutional provision that, you know, spawned his office in the first place, and uh, and there was something in the uh, in in the speaker's memo that says basically, well, look, um, you know, we know that the auditor's office has uh, limited resources, and um, you know, can the auditors uh, this this working group help the auditor, you know, prioritize. Uh, the work that he's got and give suggestions as to scope of work. So uh, well, this was a criticism of him. What, what, it was a 79 page, you know, report. It was, uh, it was not kind to him. It raised the question of whether he should be removed. Removal would take two thirds of the legislature. I mean, he's under fire. In fact, the title of our show is, uh, you know, uh, is he on the chop chopping block? So what did they claim was wrong with how the state auditor was functioning? Yeah, and, and see, that's that's kind of uh, where the second half of our title comes from. You know, is this a real report or is this a whack job? Uh, and, and, we're, and we're trying to figure out, uh, you know, which this is. Now, if the idea was to help the auditor prioritize and, and, and rescope, uh, you know, his or her... Uh, workload, uh, the findings and conclusions of this report uh, didn't seem to help in that department. What they, uh, what this report did uh, was it started off by, you know, looking at, oh, um, uh, let's interview some former employees of the auditor's office, and oh, he he has been. A combative. He's been, uh, you know, a, a dilly of a person to work with. Uh, he's been argumentative. Uh, he has been creating a toxic work environment. Uh, okay, and uh, that is under the rubric of okay, why uh, is the office of the auditor not producing as much uh, in in final work product as maybe some others have been? 
Well, that, yeah, that seems to. I'm just looking at the uh, newspaper article now. Um, it was in the Star Advertiser on April sixth. Hmm. Only, gee, is that today? My goodness. Um, You're well and, informed. Yeah. Well, what can I say? But you know, the the, um, the, the it seems to be that he hasn't come 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 through with reports that they expected him to do and finish. Um, and he hasn't responded to their requests for reports and audits and the like. And they say, you know, it seems to me like just glancing at this, that they don't consider him well suited for the job. But you know, there's, there's gotta be a sacred cow in there somewhere. There's gotta be a backstory that is not in this article and maybe the public doesn't know about. Um, who knows what it is? I mean, one possibility is that um, he's, he's working on things that would embarrass people and they don't want him to do that. Um, so they want him out. Uh, and he says his reaction is they just, they want him out for the wrong reason. Uh, let, me, let me quote the article here. It's very interesting. Um, the, oh, his budget issue and all this. Um, um, he opposes being removed. Um, and he thinks this is a, a kind of, uh, to use uh, Donald Trump's term, a witch hunt. Um, and um, it's a fight, it's an argument. And, uh, you know, we're going to see who, who prevails. But I still don't know exactly what he's done wrong or why there should be this contention. Um, this is going yeah, to no, be I mean, a new story going forward. We'll find out more. Yeah. Now, a lot of the report concentrated on OHA. Uh, one of the things that happened, if you remember, is that there was a budget proviso uh, inserted in uh, you know, two years ago in the 2019 legislative session saying uh, that $3 million of OHA's budget is contingent upon the state auditor being able to produce a financial and management audit of that agency. Okay. Um, and so so his office goes in there and before long they they uh, they take a look at the minutes of the of the trustee meetings and they say oh, okay can we see the minutes uh of the meetings uh, unredacted and and uh because there were a number of uh consultations with a legal counsel uh and uh, and they wanted to see what they were now uh, for for most people, con, uh, conversations between an attorney and a client are privileged. Okay, uh, but the question there becomes: Okay, they they are privileged to outsiders, and uh, so if I, for example, had a conversation with an attorney, and you know you weren't my boss. Uh, we didn't work for the same company. You can't see those conversations. But if you were my boss, okay, and the the attorney was hired by the company, then of, then of course you have the right to see those conversations because uh, it's the company's uh, you know the company's the client. I'm not, uh, and you're not an outsider. So the question then becomes: Okay, if the uh, attorneys here were retained by OHA as opposed to any, you know, particular individual like Mr. Crabb, uh, who used to be the uh, executive director of OHA at the time, then... Oh, he was the uh, one that wrote to John Kerry, wasn't he? He was the one that wrote, wrote on behalf of OHA to John Kerry, saying that uh, OHA represented a, a, a separate nation, and John Kerry should deal with him as a you know, a separate nation back, back in the day. Yeah, I, I don't know what if, if that was um, uh, the, uh, the chair of the board of trustees or whether it was um, the executive director. I, I think it was Crab. Okay. Um, but in any event, the, the question then becomes, okay, in, uh, in Les Condo's position as state auditor, is he an insider or is he an outsider? Um, and, and I think there, there are good arguments on both sides, but... Uh, uh, OHA did file suit. Uh, the question of privilege was raised, and the and the court held uh, that uh, you know these these minutes were privileged, and you know they they 
they're not to be disclosed to uh, the state auditor. Okay. But, but, but this is the state. OHA is a state agency. There's no question about it. Uh, right. well, doesn't what they do, doesn't it belong to us as the taxpayers? Doesn't it belong to the state auditor who works to find uh, improprieties? Um, yeah, well, I mean, maybe there's a good legal reason there, but I tell you the truth, as a matter of just you know fairness and um, responsible government, uh, I don't see why they would fight with that. They're, they're, they're funded by the state of Hawaii. They are the state of Hawaii. Why can't we know about that? Well, in any event, um, uh, what the state auditor did was, was he really didn't wait for the the, uh, the the court ruling. He said, look, if you're not going to give these things to me, I'm going to stop my audit. I can't continue with this. That means you don't get your $3 million. And that's that's when you know people went off the deep end. What's wrong with that? Anything? I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if I would have done the same thing if I were in his position, um, because I think there's a lot of stuff that you can, you know, take a look at and conclude even if, um, uh, even if you didn't know the results of, or that you didn't know the attorney-client conversations. Uh, one of the things that the report says, for example, is that they faulted him for looking at the LLCs. Uh, that OHA owned. Uh, but even in financial accounting, you have to look at the, uh, you know, the enterprise, including all uh, more than 50% owned entities in order to have a good understanding of what the what the financial enterprise is. You, you can't, I mean, um, at, at least... Uh, well, no, you know, for, you've got to be able to do that. Remember, again, it's a state agency. And if they got a schematic of uh, some, you know subsidiaries and affiliates that they have somehow constructed with our tax money, we really need to know what's going on. I mean, I I, I compliment the uh, the vote of the trustees to call for an audit, and I compliment his um, you know. What, no, no, the trustees style. didn't call for the audit. Who, the who legislature the said audit? the hmm. legislature said, you know, if you want three million dollars of our taxpayer money. You need to come up with this audit, or you're not going to get your three million dollars. Okay, well, I compliment the legislature for doing that, and um, that's you know that's what we expect, isn't it? We want to we want to know that our state agencies are uh, performing properly, and uh, I don't know, I uh, what 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 other recourse would he have if they stopped him on looking at minutes and the like, if they refused to give him information about affiliates and subsidiaries of a state agency. I think at some point, at some point, you would have to suspend the audit, and and say, you know, I I can't uh, access enough information to come up with a conclusion. So now uh, he's being criticized for not finishing the audit. That's right. I don't Among other that. things, I, what, what, a, a lot of yeah. uh, you know, a lot of the report, uh, you know, uh, the the um, speakers working group report uh, goes into that incident, and. Um, and and claims he's at fault for, you know, uh, pursuing a scope of of audit beyond what the legislature asked for, uh, which, I mean, I, I I don't agree with that either. Uh, I I I think that if they want to uh, have an audit of OHA, you got to look at the subs, and and there's I think financial uh, 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 auditing guidance that says that. Yeah, and if you were working for Price Waterhouse Coopers and you found something, you would want to follow it wherever it takes you. I mean, that's the, the mark of a good investigator. You don't you don't stop, and and I, I I really don't I don't think it resonates to say you went beyond the bounds of what we told you to do. An auditor has to have a certain amount of flexibility, of discretion, in going after what he feels is is the the story, the truth. Don't you agree? Yeah. So, so that then, you know, uh, has has us take a look at the report in its entirety, and and you know, we we start wondering, okay, is this really a tool to help the auditor prioritize and uh, you know define the scope, or is it a whack job? And and it and you know, the more uh, 
of these kind of questionable conclusions uh, that the uh, that the report comes up with, the more it starts looking like a whack job. And by a whack job, I mean uh, you know something uh, that is a collection of facts and arguments uh, used to uh, advocate for the you know dismissal or other adverse personnel action um, that the report's directed against. In this case, Ms. you know Mr. Kondo. There's got to be a lot of politics beyond, beyond, behind the scenes, don't you think? I mean, the people at OHA didn't want him to get that information. The lawyers for OHA didn't want him to, you know, get that information. And uh, the, it, what the net effect of all of this is that he didn't get the information, and now he's at risk of losing his job, uh, and perhaps no one will ever get that information. Isn't that what happened? what's happening? That's that's what it looks like. Now, I mean, there's still a way for the you know the truth to come out. Um, we we have, for example, uh, new trustees in there now that are uh, you know working to uh, you know bring a lot of this information to light. Uh, you know, uh, Kelly Akina comes to mind, uh, and um, uh, I think we we need to. Uh, know the truth. We need, uh, as taxpayers who are funding this agency, we need to know the truth. And uh, and, and we do need to have uh, insight as to what is actually going on within OHA, as we as we uh, need to have with all of the state agencies, um, you know, especially the big ones. Yeah, and, well, you know, OHA has tons of money and they get tons of money from, from the state right off the top, hundreds of millions. So we really need to follow that money. Now, you know, uh, and I agree with you absolutely about Philip Iacchino. He is a, 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 a breath of fresh air over there. Um, but, you know, I, I, I have the recollection that there are rules in OHA which make it hard for the auditor to talk to a trustee about these things. They have, you know, internal rules that limit the ability of any trustee to make public statements about what's been going on. Is that true? Um, yes, it is. Um, but again, it's 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 really to kind of preserve the uh, you know the secrecy and and lessen the uh, accountability to the public. Looks like you know looks like to me. So I, I would have just some concerns about whether that kind of rule is valid. I would too. Now, Les Condo was a lawyer himself, you know, and he's been around. He's uh served on a number of uh, state organizations, including the Public Utilities Commission. Um, and, you know, he's seen the way things work. So on the one hand, you say, well, you know, there must be, there must be fire where all the smoke is. And if Les uh, suspects there's something he should be looking for, you got to give him credit for that. He knows the territory. Um, on the other hand, um, you know, you also have to look at the fact that, uh, the state, the state has a certain culture of not revealing, protecting certain information. So this is really an important matter. Tom. This is a, this is a, an important case, an important controversy, because it stands for more than just this one, you know, uh, this one audit, this one auditor, uh, this one agency. As you say, we we really have to clarify uh, whether the public has a way. To find out what's going on. A newspaper reporter would have difficulty in finding it. If the auditor can't find it, you know, what about a newspaper? That'd be hard too, wouldn't it? It'd be harder. Uh, a, a newspaper reporter is treated as a member of the public and, and, and they can't get to stuff that the state auditor can get to, or at least in theory. And, and I think that's why it's very valuable to have uh, you know, a state auditor who is committed to, uh, you know, investigating, finding out the truth and making it known to, to, to the public, uh, you know, the public that pays all the bills. Yeah, and the public whose money may be squandered as we speak. Um, you know, that is a real possibility here. So what, what happens, what happens if um, Les Condo is, quote, removed? by a two-thirds vote of the legislature. You know, uh, 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 that's what the article talks about. Um, you know, what, what happens? 
another auditor would be appointed, I suppose. Yes. And the other auditor would be managed by whatever committees or officials are involved. Um, and maybe the, the next order wouldn't, wouldn't be as aggressive as less conduct. That's, that's a real possibility, yes. Very, very troublesome. So what's the process here? Let's just look at that for a moment. Um, if he was removed or if he quit, you know, you know like who needs this? Um, who, who appoints the next one? And does he need to be confirmed or she? Confirmed by the, by the state senate. Uh, it's not just the senate. Uh, the house and senate have to meet in joint session to approve any nominee, and also to fire one. So uh, a, a, a two thirds vote is needed to oust someone from a, 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 the state order position that they now have, and I think a majority of the house and senate is needed to approve a nominee to a state order vacancy, but. The, but the idea is uh, they need to have a House-Senate joint session, which doesn't happen very often. Um, but that's what's required by the Constitution. Yeah. So in the meantime, what we have is a kind of stalemate. This report sort of creates or codifies a stalemate. Um, the $3 million isn't coming out because the audit's not being done. Um, and I guess part of the criticism is that he's spending more and the legislature wants him to spend on these audits. And they're mad at him because he's not producing the audits and, and he's calling for more money, but they're not willing to give him more money. And uh, they're, they're limiting his ability to do what he feels needs to be done. Is that a fair yeah, I mean, there, there were other um, measures in the legislature to A, you know, lop his budget in half, B, uh, combine his office with um, LRB and I think the ombudsman. Uh, neither of which uh, have 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 passed. All of all of them are, uh, ha all of those bills have died. Uh, so, uh, and and really the wild card in this is the Senate. Uh, you know, assuming the House is going along with what the Speaker wants to do, uh, you know the, uh, the 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 Senate needs to go along in order for anything to happen. And the question is whether, you know. Uh, or you know how how much in lockstep are they? Uh, is the Senate going to you know really do uh, their own investigation? Uh, you know all that is all of these are open questions. Well, as I said earlier, it just sounds to me like an ordinary citizen. It sounds to me that there's there's more here than meets the eye because you know to write a seventy nine page report, take a whack, uh, use your term, take a whack at a at an auditor who is charged with uh, representing the public. Um, that's pretty, mm, that's pretty serious business. And um, it's you know, seriously I, troublesome. Yes, seriously troublesome. What it is. And I can see that anybody interested, for example, in the, the way the tax laws are being implemented, uh, the way the money is flowing through the state government, um, you know, who, who, who becomes the watchman after that? If, the, if you attack the watchman and you remove the watchman, and you criticize the watchman, you know, undermine his funding and his um, credibility and his his power. Um, you're really undermining the right of the public to know. I can see. I can see. We should all be concerned about that. We should all want to know more about how this all got started. We should all want to know more about uh, what happened with OHA and and other investigations. Uh, now, I, I would I would grant you that some audit reports that we've seen in years past didn't seem to be justified. Others did. Um, Marion Higo was very good. She was a great state auditor and everybody relied on her to find out what was cooking. And, uh, you know, you know one, one point I would say is that in the case of Marion Higo, um, you didn't have to audit everything. Just once in a while, you come up with an audit that reveals um, things that the public should know about and everybody's stands back and says, wow, we didn't know that was happening. Um, and, and including state officials who then say, hmm, we ought, to, we ought to guide our conduct by the possibility that Marion will investigate our agency. And maybe that you know, makes them more law abiding. I hope um, it does. Yeah, so you can't investigate everything, but you have to investigate those cases that are gonna send a message 
rippling through state government, but she can't get away with stuff. And and to hit the auditor now, hmm, that could send an, another message altogether. Yeah, it's like defunding the police, right? I mean, uh, you rely on the police to uh, to to uh, maintain law and order, to uh, make sure that people are honest, and uh, you know, if you take away their budget, as as some people are advocating. Uh, you got to live with the consequences of that, you know, same, same here. So I'm frustrated by this because I, I think the ultimate decision process here is not within the hands of the public. It's within, it's, it's a backroom decision, isn't it? It may well be. Um, and, and that's another reason why we're concerned. And that's why we uh, thought of taking the time today to, uh, you know, to bring this matter uh, up in in this show, we should follow it, Tom. Um, you should follow it, and I would like to follow it with you and to see how it spins out here. I would be I would be troubled with some results, like if he was removed. Uh, I would like to know more. So hopefully, the newspaper will help us, and we'll otherwise find find out what what is what the dynamics are here. Closing thoughts: What would you like people to think? Of this discussion well um whether or not uh you know i i agree with uh les condo's reports and you know some of them i agree with some of them i don't but in in any event uh it's you know those reports have been uh very valuable in getting you know uh information that the public hasn't seen uh, you know, into into the public light and, and discussion. Uh, so I think uh, these reports have been providing a valuable service. Certainly, uh, when I write my articles, uh, I've used lots of auditors reports as uh, as fuel and ammunition. Uh, so I, I do want to keep the, uh, you know, the information coming. And I, I do want somebody, you know, with uh, with metal, with uh, uh, you know, a, you know, a good bulldog mentality uh, in that seat. I, I don't want somebody just uh, you know whitewashing whatever state government does. That's to, that that's uh, would would serve no purpose. Yeah, it could be a personality thing here. You know, he's a lawyer. He he's done aggressive things in his career for sure. Uh, but you want somebody who will go after it. You want somebody with a curiosity and uh, an ability, uh, a desire to find out what's going on to rep represent us. You don't want a wallflower. Marion Higa was not a wallflower, and we don't want a wallflower in that job. Um, thank you for bringing this to our attention, Tom. Really appreciate the discussion. Thanks for having me on the show, Jay, as always. Aloha.